I wasted four years of my life in college getting a degree in art history. When I was done, I had nothing but a stupid piece of paper and a lot of bills to pay. I had been looking for a job for the past two years, but everything I tried to do just kept failing. I eventually got a job at the local supermarket, but with the measly pay, I was basically living from paycheck to paycheck. It didn't take long before I raked up a huge credit card debt, and I knew I had to do something fast to get myself out of the situation. I remembered my college days and I recalled a few of my friends who had dropped out because they had all found a very lucrative side hustle. They tried to hide it, but I knew they had all become cam girls. I frowned on it at the time, but being in my current situation, I was willing to consider anything. I began to do some research on how to get into it, but the deeper I dug, the more I realized why I was so against it at the time. I knew I wasn't comfortable bearing it all on the internet to some random strangers, and no matter how much I tried, I knew my body wouldn't let me do it. I was about to give up when I came across something. It was a strange mini ad that read, are you a cam girl looking for good pay? Then sign up to Dripping Red Fantasies, where you can make and decide your own rules. The goth girl that was displayed in the ad was more or less fully clothed. And that grabbed my attention and I was looking for something where I wouldn't have to expose that much skin. I tried to click the link, but my browser popped up with a message that read, this browser is unable to access the link. Try the Tor browser instead. Seeing the words Tor browser instantly made me remember a conversation I had in college about the dark web. I knew that the browser gave you access to the dark web, and I also knew that nothing good came from it. The numerous horrific stories spoke for themselves, and everything in my body screamed at me not to do it. But my resolve was steel, as I knew that if there was a chance that this link could be what I was looking for, I would stop at nothing to get it. So I installed the Tor browser and clicked on the link. I was taken to a website called Dripping Red Fantasies, and I was presented with a lot of odd videos. I played one of them, and I watched a girl who again was more or less fully clothed get out a needle, she pierced her skin, and I watched her blood trickle down her body. This repeated several times, and I noticed that she wasn't piercing any vital places. When the video was done, I tried to play the second one, but I was asked to pay $200 to view it. As I kept browsing through the website, I realized that the other videos were more or less similar as they all involved blood. I saw another one where a girl drenched herself in a gallon of fake blood while she talked in a flirtatious way to the audience. I became perplexed as I tried to wrap my head around what I had just seen. The supposed chem girls I saw in the videos weren't doing anything that sexual as they didn't reveal anything to their audience. It took me a while, but I eventually figured it out. I remembered a while back when I read something about a sexual fetish called hemotilinia, widely known as blood play. It was basically a blood fetish, as people who had it became aroused by the smell, sight, and texture of blood. Knowing this, I finally understood what I had seen and why the website was called Dripping Red Fantasies. I had a huge smile on my face as I realized that this was exactly what I was looking for. It was perfect because I didn't have to reveal everything, as the major thing the viewers needed to see was blood, and I wasn't scared of needles or drawing a little blood. I went to sleep that night with a smile on my face as I told myself I found the answer to my problems. The next day, I immediately signed up for the Dripping Red Fantasies website. It didn't take long before I grew a following, and the money I got from the videos was great. I eventually stopped coming to work, which led the manager of the local supermarket, an elderly man called Gabriel Owen, to check up on me. I ignored his constant calls and visits, as even though I knew he meant well, all that I wanted to do was to focus on making more videos and getting more money. Things went great with the website for a while, till one fateful afternoon. I decided to go live on the website to take requests, as my viewers paid instant money for me to do what they wanted. I would get requests like, pierce your finger and smear the blood on your lips, or cut your thighs and let the blood drip down your beautiful legs. I had been doing it for a while now, but seeing the requests still wasn't normal for me. But even then, I did it with no hesitation, as these men dropped $600 to $700 per request. While I kept on taking requests, I was calm because I knew they'd follow the guidelines I put on my bio as I outlined everything I was comfortable with doing and how far I was willing to go. 
I continued the live session for a while till I was tired, so I asked. Any last requests? No one responded. So I guessed they were all satisfied, too. I was about to leave the live session when someone called Bloody Mark said, Gut yourself. I was shocked at the request as it was extremely shady and very unlike my normal viewers. So I calmly said, I'm sorry, Bloody Mark, but I can't do that. That's going a bit too far. You can check another channel. It's very unlikely, but maybe you'd find a girl who'd do it for you. When Bloody Mark paid 15 grand for the request. Before I could say anything, he continued with, Come on, baby. I just gave you the best payment of your life. I'm sure you haven't seen money like that before. So come on, gut yourself for me. It'll be fine, trust me. I just want to see you struggle as you wallow in your blood. I knew I had encountered a psychopath, as the man called Bloody Mark was clearly delusional. So I firmly told him, As I said, I can't do that. Get off my channel. His tone then instantly changed as he said, Okay, bitch. I didn't think you'd chicken out after all that money, but I guess you're just a dumb whore. Send me back my cash so I'd find a more competent woman to do it. He began to give me his details so that I could wire the funds back to him, but I knew what he said was true. I wasn't going to see money like that anytime soon, and I also didn't want to fulfill his sick fantasy. I found myself on a blocked road, and I still really didn't want to lose the money, so my body acted without thinking as I ended the live video before I could give him his cash. I had never done it before, but I assumed that he couldn't do anything to me as he didn't know anything about me or where I lived. I also thought to myself that with the huge amount of cash he gave me, I didn't have to keep being a cam girl on the dripping red fantasies. So I deleted my account and I went to bed that night thinking of the endless possibilities I could do with the money. I don't know why, but I didn't feel guilty that I stole 15 grand from that bloody mark as I told myself that he was a messed up person who deserved it. And if he could drop that amount of money on a random cam girl, he probably had a lot of it. A few days went by and nothing really happened. I had almost forgotten about the whole ordeal till one fateful day. It was on a Tuesday and I had just come back from grocery shopping. As I was putting things away in the fridge, I felt strong hands grip my neck and mouth. Within seconds, I was violently thrown to the floor. I looked over me in terror to see a huge man looming over me. He had a sick grin plastered on his face as he said, I finally found you, you stupid bitch. I froze in fear as I knew exactly who the voice belonged to. B Bloody Mark? I stuttered. The man then said, Guess you are not as dumb as you look. I was paralyzed with fear as I wondered how he found me. I watched him take out a jagged knife from his pocket as he began to get closer. Out of fear for my life, I said the first thing that came to my mind as I stuttered the words, I'm sorry for what I did. I still have your money. I haven't used much of it, so please put the knife away and we can talk about this like adults. He laughed and responded with, Adults? You're nothing but a useless thief. You denied my request and then stole from me. I'm sure you thought you'd get away with it, but no one gets away from Bloody Mark. As my heart raced, I began to stutter. Please, please, I have your money. I'm sorry for stealing from you. I'd give it back. That's when he said, seeing as you took it by force, that money is yours now. I'm not here for that. I'm here to get my money's worth as my last request wasn't fulfilled. So, I decided to come and fulfill it by force. I then watched in horror as he drove the knife into me. I instantly felt the blade inside me as immeasurable pain began to ripple through my body. As my blood spilled out, I watched him dip his hands into the small pool of blood like an ecstatic toddler and rub the blood over his face. The scene was morbid as I watched him get more and more excited. He began to touch himself while he watched me die. As I laid there bleeding out, I tried to scream, but I knew it was hopeless as no one was near enough to hear me. The world around me became dark as I thought this was it for me. Nothing but regret filled me as I told myself that if I had just kept my normal job and been content, none of this would have happened. I had become obsessed with the thrill of making that much money and it turned me into a thief. And now 
I was paying the price for that. My eyes began to close when I heard a loud thunk sound. I saw Bloody Mark fall to the floor with a gash on his head as I heard a voice say, Sally, are you all right? But before I could make out the face, I blacked out. I woke up in the hospital, surrounded by my family. The cops shortly entered my room and asked me questions, and I told them everything that happened. When the questioning was over, I remember asking who saved my life, and I was told it was my former boss, Gabriel Owen, who had called the police. The police officer told me, he said he was going to check on you as he normally did, and upon seeing the scene, he reacted quickly as he struck your assailant and saved your life. After hearing that, I felt my eyes tear up as I began to cry my heart out. It's been two years since this incident. The man called Bloody Mark, whose real name was Mark Jones, was imprisoned for attempted murder. I was also charged with grand theft, as I did steal a large sum of money. The funds were seized, and my lawyer managed to keep the sentence to one year of community service by convincing the jury to take in consideration that I was attacked and almost killed. He also told them that I was completely willing to give back the stolen funds. When I was done with my service, I went back to my former job at the local supermarket to work with a man who saved my life. My parents began to support me so that I wouldn't have to do anything like that again. Even though I wasn't getting as much money as before, I was content because I realized that like everyone else, I was once obsessed with getting fast money and I let it consume me and ruin my life. But now I've learned to take things slow and cherish the better things in life as I experienced firsthand why many people say money is the root of all evil. If you're enjoying this content, make sure you like and subscribe. My name's Ethan. I'm 26, and I love the internet. It's vast, almost as big as the real world. On the internet, people play, work, entertain themselves, study, get information, express their opinions, buy and sell, and do so many other things that are also done in the tangible world, sometimes even creating significant events in what we biasly call reality. However, like any large and complex space, the internet has its dark alleys, its forbidden passages. I'm referring to the deep web. This is the hidden face of the internet, the massive iceberg of which we barely know the tip that emerges above the waters. Most people are unaware of it, but the deep web represents about 90% of the information in cyberspace. Ever since I learned that the deep web existed, I wanted to get to know it and dive into its murky waters. I had my fears, but my curiosity was much more significant, and after a while of thinking about it, I decided to at least take a little luck. I started by entering directly to level 3. Here begins what is forbidden on the official web, pages whose characters are randomly dropped, pages that cannot be displayed in search engines and that you cannot see even if you copy the entire link and paste it in the address bar. In this level, there are strange, disturbing or simply useless things, webs abandoned for more than 13 years, materials that by copyright are not found in the official web, or were found, but are no longer there, markets of weapons, drugs, instructions on how to make bombs and other things that lend themselves to the illegal, and videos and photos of murders. It was already said that in the previous level, there was solid gore material, but here, there are live murders, assassins, and even trade in human organs. As the hours passed, I started getting bored and advanced to the next level. If in the previous story there were compromising things for governments, in this level, there are military secrets in the most lurid and inhumane state projects. Here, you will know what missile that countries are hiding is, what cybernetic weapons are hidden, and who has the most lethal biological weapons, things like that. I entered out of curiosity to one of the famous Red Room videos, and I saw how they murdered a young man of no more than 20 years old. The boy was begging for mercy with all his strength, told them that he had family waiting for him, that he never did wrong to anyone. Before murdering him, 
they sent a poll to the viewers asking them if they should let him live, to which I voted yes. Unfortunately, the rest of the viewers disagreed with me, so the man moved forward again and opened the young man's neck with a precise and quick movement. The camera zoomed in on his gaze as he made a futile attempt to cover his wound by lowering his neck. So, as quickly as it started, the show was over. The lights were turned off, while some men came in to clean up to prepare for the next show. I felt like throwing up and decided to leave as quickly as possible. I wanted to advance to the next level, where there were no more murders, but state secrets and information that people would never know. It took me a long time to get in, but when I finally got in, I understood why everyone stayed in the lower levels. As soon as I logged in, my PC restarted by itself without anything weird popping up on the screen or the power going out. When the reboot process was finally complete, I saw that my hard drive had been wiped. On the entire desktop, there was only one file from the notes blog, placed right in the center of the screen, as if to make me notice it. I opened it. Its message was brief, blunt, and somewhat threatening. Don't do it again. I got so scared that I didn't enter the deep web for several days. In that time, I reinstalled a few things to a backup I had of my data. I thought that was the worst of it, that losing all my data was the most significant punishment I could suffer. I was wrong. A few days later, my curiosity got the better of me, and I logged into Tor and entered the first deep web forum I could find. Of course, I wasn't even at an advanced level yet but my PC restarted by itself, and the data was deleted again. Although now, there was no message on the desktop. Was I banned from the deep web from my computer forever? 20 minutes after the reboot and formatting, I knew better. The doorbell rang. I asked who it was from the door's phone, and no one answered. Then, I went down to the front door of the building, but no one was there. Only an envelope was waiting for me, just under the door. It had no return address, addressee, or anything written on it, although I sensed it was for me. I went back upstairs to my apartment, went into my room, and just there, opened the envelope once I was sitting on my red carpet. Ethan, this is not a game. Don't do it again. Don't make us come after you. As I read it, my hands began to shake and tears slipped down my cheeks. Whoever they were, they knew who I was, where I lived, what I did, and when. To top it off, next to the message was a picture of me taken with my webcam. Next to it, pictures of my family, my friends, even my little sister who was still in kindergarten. In an act of desperation, I grabbed the phone and dialed the police number. I had no idea what to say to them when they answered. Deep inside, I knew there was nothing they could do. But before I answered, I saw through the computer's reflection a hooded man with his face covered coming right at me. When I turned around to defend myself, it was too late. The man grabbed my head and began slamming it against my keyboard. As he did so, I heard his voice, distorted by a device, telling me, I told you, this is not a game. I was still dizzy and thought about mustering all my strength to get away, but suddenly, I felt a cold prick in my arm. A few seconds later, I became very sleepy, and surrendering to whatever they had injected me with, I closed my eyes. When I woke up, my house was in perfect condition, but something was wrong with the computer. It wouldn't turn on. After checking in, I noticed that it was missing the hard drive, video card, processor, and RAM. The man who had visited me had taken the most expensive components and had rendered it useless. But at the time, I didn't care. I was so terrified that week. I asked at work to be transferred to another city. I never entered the deep web again. And I don't think I will ever try it again, no matter where I am in the world. Fate had been cruel to me. But after remembering how I was at the mercy of this man, asleep, it makes me think that, despite everything, I am fortunate to be alive.